Welcome to Lummi and Ferndale Seventh Avenue Church. My sermon title today is What are the indicators that you need to return to God? And the biblical verse that I selected today is in Luke 23:34a. Jesus said, "Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing." Jay Leno had frequently done a man-on-the-street interview. And one night, he caught some young people to ask them questions about the Bible. And Mr. Lenho turned to a young man and asked, who, according to the Bible, was eaten by a whale? The confident answer was Pinocchio. Unfortunately, some in the church are just as clueless about the book of Jonah. What are the indicators that you need to return to God? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we humbly come to you today as we listen to your word, Lord. We ask that uh, you give us the guidance to be able to keep a loving relationship with you and with others. Lord, I know that you didn't leave us here alone. You, you gave us your word, Lord, so that um, you'll be able to speak to us, speak through us. And Lord, today we ask that uh, your word touch our hearts so we could do your will and praise you in all we can. In your name we pray. Amen. I heard about a gallery owner who called one of his featured artists and said, I have some good news and some bad news. And the artist said, well, what's the good news? The good news is that a man came in here the other day and was looking at your painting. He asked whether the value of the paintings would go up if the artist were to die. I told him they would, of course. So he bought every one of your paintings. <laughs> That's fantastic, the artist said. What's the bad news? Well, the bad news is the man was your doctor. Are we a society that ignores God until the last few days of our lives? Did you know that the Holy Bible is read aloud on the steps of the U.S. Capitol every year? This year, the D.C. Bible Reading Marathon is from May 1st to the 5th. The U.S. Capitol Bible Reading Marathon vision is because the Bible is at the heart of Americans' founding principles. It should be voiced out at the heart of our federal government exhorting our nation to return to God's precepts. Therefore, it is our desires to publicly read God's holy word on the steps of the national capital every year for 90 consecutive hours. Why do so many people decide to ignore God? Why are we so willing to ignore the existence of God? Why do so many people choose to ignore the opportunity to live forever with God? Our government and private institutions collectively spend billions of dollars every year researching cures for life's disease in an effort to prolong our lives, attempting to live longer, whether in healthy lifestyle quest or fitness pursuits, or alleged medical solutions. However, our overall lives is no longer than it was years gone by, of course, depending where you live. So why do we spend so much to gain so little? Why don't we spend much time reading the Holy Bible to find the answers to live forever 
with no sorrow or crying or pain. Revelation 21, 4 states, He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the mind-boggling truth is that eternal life Jesus is offering is absolutely free. Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, God saved you by his grace when you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Since Jesus Christ paid for it all on the cross, it cost but only a belief in him through a personal loving relationship with him. Thus, investing your time in knowing Him through reading His Word, praying, following His will, and sharing His love and purpose to others. So, why do you ignore Jesus the way you do? Maybe the answers to these questions of mine is because since you and I live in such an advanced technical world, God is no longer relevant and he has an outdated belief. The intriguing part about our increase in knowledge is it was founded about 2,186 years ago in the book of Daniel, specifically in Daniel 12.4. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end when many will rush here and there and knowledge will increase. Or maybe the reason you ignore Jesus Christ the way you do is because you don't want to be accountable to anyone, especially God. Or you don't like the words that come out of his mouth. Or you rather eat, drink, and, and be merry. Or you are content with your sins, therefore you don't ever want to change. Or you prefer to spend your time learning how to make money than spending time in learning about God, His blessings, treasures, and rewards. Or you simply don't care to love Him or, or others. When you ignore God's Word and refuse to re-examine your attitudes and actions to make certain you are squaring up with the truth of the Bible. It's an indicator that you need to return to God. God says to those that are ignoring or left him all together, I will not be angry with you forever. Admit that you strayed away from him before it's too late. Fess up that you place your work before God. Acknowledge your sins from your heart. Confess that you refused to listen to his voice. And have a heartfelt sorrow for your sins that results in a changed life. What are the indicators that you need to return to God? You can't forgive and your anger is mounting up to a point where you dislike your friends and family members with a passion. Whether you believe it or not, our society through social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, news media, help push us into dividing our nations, dividing our family and friends. Your loved ones or friends on your timeline that you disagree with is angry or gone altogether. Here's a chilling fact that totally makes sense. Dr. Laura Stretfler is a 
licensed mental health counselor in which she said people don't necessarily go on social media for new information. They go on social media to read information about what they already know or believe. Chris Wright Isaac is a marketing and advertising professor at FGCU in which he said they have algorithms that build on what you search for before and they will send you more of that he said we live in a society in which people who want to believe in something go to the internet to find validation via social media rather than finding truth this is the same when people who want to believe in something go to the holy bible to find validation via god's word rather than finding truth in jesus christ but that's another sermon in itself it appears to me social media amplifies moral and emotional messages while systemizing people into social communities based on tribal conflicts. Your anger comes from you only exposing yourself to the ideas you already agree. Your anger comes from you only seeking out and agreeing with views that align with your pre-existing beliefs. Your anger comes from you only selecting your preferred news media sites and posts on your social media, which make it easier for you to listen to individuals or groups who validate your own worldview points while arguing or ignoring everyone else. Your anger comes from you only seeking advice from people who hold similar beliefs, determining that they are more competent despite evidence to the contrary. Joyce Kelly, Associate Director of Research at the Pew Research Center, said political polarization is more intense now than at any point in modern history. Nearly 80% of Americans now have just a few or no friends at all across the aisle, according to Pew. And the uh, and animosity goes both ways. Here are some great advice from Tana Israel, psychology professor of the University of California, in which she said, a little more listening to understand, a little less trying to convince, and a lot more intellectual Humility would do everyone a world of good. And she also said, we're flattening people out in terms of our view of them, and we're not really seeing the full complexity of people on the other side. Church is not exempt from these sort of things, but is in many other areas when it comes to our views about how to be faithful to God, like music, the Sabbath, education, parenting, being a vegetarian, reactions to COVID-19, and the list goes on. With all that said, and if the truth be told boldly as a Christian, how dare you reject a person who God has accepted? Undeniably, the best method to decide what your attitude and feelings to others ought to be should be determined on what Jesus Christ's attitude toward them is. But some of you are thinking about the golden rule about this time. Matthew 7, 12a do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. However, in my opinion, this principle to treat them as Jesus does in forgiveness and love is a way better principle than the golden rule. 
the God of the universe, Jesus Christ, allowed those who hated and despised him to murder him on the cross. Yet, in Luke 23, 34a, Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Notice, he is thinking of those people who are in much greater danger than his own. Jesus Christ loves everyone, and that includes you too. Unforgiveness and anger are other indicators that you need to return to God. There is a story about a drunken husband snuck up the stairs quietly. He looked in the bathroom here and bandaged the bumps and bruises that he received in a fight earlier that night. He then proceeded to climb into bed, smiling at the thought that he pulled one over on his wife. When morning came, he opened his eyes and there stood his wife. You were drunk last night, weren't you? No, honey. Well, if you weren't, then who put all those band-aids on the bathroom mirror? Nathan, the prophet of Israel, during the reigns of David and Solomon, was told by God to share a story with David in which a poor man raised a little lamb and it grew up with his children. The lamb ate from his plate and drank from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. Then the rich man took and killed the poor man's only lamb instead of killing an animal from his own plentiful flock. David was rightly furious at the wrong when he said in 2 Samuel 1, I mean 12, 5, As surely as the Lord lives, he vows any man who would do such a thing deserves to die. Then Nathan shocked David by saying, You are that man. David's hidden sins had come back to haunt him and your sins will also come back to haunt you. His killing of Bathsheba's husband, as, as well as him committing adultery, was now exposed. Don't ever fool yourself into thinking you can hide your sins from God. David now realized that he had set God aside in his life and he needed to return to God. As a result, he repented, was forgiven, suffered the consequences, and remained king. Nathan was not only a prophet, but was a close, trusted friend. Even when the truth was tough to hear, he spoke truth to David. He was faithful to God and his word, as well as loyal in his service to King David. These are essential traits in a friendship. It said something special about David and Bathsheba's friendship with Nathan when they named one of their sons after him. May God place these kinds of friendship along your journey with your Lord and Savior. Consequently, trying to hide your sins from God is another indicator that you need to return to Him. Friendship like this must never be ditched or rejected or even defriended from social media just for saying the truth that benefits your salvation. This brings us to another indicator that you need to return to God. That is, forgetting or not wanting to serve God and others with love. Just a reminder of God's love for you in Hebrews 6, 10b-12. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard that you have worked for Him and how you have shown your love to Him by caring for other believers as you still do. 
our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts. In order to make certain that what you hope for will come true, then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the examples of those who are going to inherit God's promise because of their faith and endurance. You see, by serving others in love, you yourself will become caring, spiritual sharp, and have faith that endures. Serving lets you experience God's presence in new ways. You will be inspired when you encourage others and they find healing. Throughout my life as a dentist and pastor, I've been in many missionary trips and when I came home, I came home feeling like I got more than I gave. Also serving here in the Ferndale District, when I come home, I always feel like I got more than I gave. If you feel your faith is slowly fading away, it's because your service for God and others has diminished or has even completely eluded you. It's as if you are pushing with everything you have through the doors he closed. But if you were to see the power what Jesus Christ can do within you to serve him and others, you begin looking for the doors he has already opened. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now, that the day of his return is drawing near. Serving God and others surrounds you with heavenly angels and other Christians who can help you follow Jesus Christ. This is how his church is supposed to work. First Peter 4 10 through 11, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have, that's right, do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to Him forever and ever. Amen. Serving through sharing the love and grace that you have been given is an expression of gratitude for what Jesus Christ has done for you. And as you serve, you begin to see others as Jesus Christ sees them. Matthew 25, 40. And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. If you have a hard time seeing others as God sees them, it's because your focus is on yourself rather than others. And if you haven't experienced miracles in your life lately, it's because you haven't served lately. May this biblical illustration on service be a new light for you. When Jesus Christ performed his first miracle, did you realize that it was not the master of the ceremony or wedding party or guests who experienced the miracle, but it was the servants who witnessed the miracle? Think about it for a minute. The master of the banquet or wedding party or the guests 
never knew a miracle had happened. Jesus Christ asked the servants to place water in the jars and serve it to the master of the banquet. As the nervous servants poured the water, they personally saw it turn into wine, while the master of the banquet and everyone else just thought that the bridegroom kept the best wine for last. John 2, 9 through 10, when the master of the ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though, of course, the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then, when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. Your diminished or lack of service to God and others is an indicator that you need to return to God. In conclusion, let's review what are the indicators that you need to return to God. The first is when you ignore God's word and refuse to re-examine your attitudes and action to make certain that you are squaring up with the truth of God's word, the Holy Bible. The second is unforgiveness and anger. The third is when you are trying to hide your sins from God. The fourth and the last indicators that you need to return to God is forgetting or not wanting to serve God and others with love. If you haven't realized it yet, life here on earth is not about you, but it's about God and others. My prayer for you today is that the Holy Spirit brings you to this realization before it's too late. Thank you for your time. Amen. See you next Sabbath.